Gladiator 2, the follow-up to Gladiator 1, an unnecessary follow-up to probably one of my favorite movies of all time. And Ridley decided to do it anyway. And I said on this channel that when the news first broke that they were doing it, and when I saw the trailer, I had absolutely zero expectation that this would be a good film whatsoever. And it turns out I was absolutely correct. Welcome to That Guy Talks Movies. I am That Guy Talking Movies again, and we're going to talk about Gladiator 2. I'm going to talk in the beginning, just say a few notes and how I feel about the film, which will not be have any spoilers in them. And then I will eventually get into spoilers, and I'll just let you know you can tune out at that point if you'd like. So let's get into it. Okay, so Gladiator 2, directed by Ridley Scott, story by Peter Craig, who actually did the story for Top Gun Maverick, which was a fantastic film. Screenplay was by David Scarpa, who really, I mean, he did, he's worked with Ridley before. I think he did The Last Castle, and he did, um, what was the recent, another one that he, oh, Napoleon, which was not a good script whatsoever. I was a little shocked that the story, you know, doing Maverick, but, you know, a good story doesn't necessarily translate to a good screenplay, especially if they're not the same person doing it. So I don't know what happened, but I personally feel that the story here was not that good either. This takes place 16 years after the death of Marcus Aurelius, and the Roman Empire is doing its thing, conquering, and they're currently under the rule of two brother, like crazy emperors, or sort of like these Caligula-like brothers, two of them, maniacs. I think one is older, one is younger, and the younger one is a little off. They're both off, but it's like debauchery and everything you possibly think of when it comes to Rome, which has fallen into just total horror and a nightmare under these two. So the Roman Empire is continuing to conquer everything, and they go to Numidia. Pedro Pascal is the leader of the Roman army, and they conquer Numidia. And in Numidia, they come across a soldier who falls to their sword and becomes slave and gets sold into gladiatorial games, just like what happens when they capture people, right? So that's really it, right? And this guy ends up becoming a gladiator and fighting for his freedom and wanting to kill Pedro Pascal's character. I forgot Pedro Pascal's character's name, but he's a general of the Roman army, essentially what Maximus is, was to the Roman army. And he wants to kill this guy, so he fights for his gladiatorial freedom, and that's essentially the film. Now, overall, this movie sucked, and I will tell you that you do not need to go to a movie theater to see this. This is a perfect example of wait for it to come on streaming, wait the extra time. You really don't need to rush to see this, especially if you're a, a, gladi a real Gladiator fan, a genuine Gladiator fan, the original film. You do not need to rush to hurt yourself and hurt your feelings when you see this. You certainly don't need to do it in a movie theater. Wait till it comes on streaming, sit home, crack a beer and watch it and you'll, and you'll be fine. It does not require a theater. Now, with all of that said, I'm going to talk now and say a few things just regarding, I guess that might have some spoilers here. So here we go. If you don't want to hear that, leave now. Come back another point after you've actually seen the movie. Let you leave your comments below and let me know what you think. Like on the way out, though. Let's get into it. With Ridley Scott being back, you would think possibly Hans Zimmer, the great Hans Zimmer, would come back and do the music. No, he didn't. Hans was smart enough to stay away from this. And I picked up on that right away. I was like, okay, Hans Zimmer didn't do the music. The opening credits of this thing are what they are. It's like an animation. I do not like the fact that this movie starts off and I don't feel anything for, for the main character, for Paul Mescal's character, who's playing basically Maximus's son in this movie. Let's just cut to the chase, who has been he was taken away a long time ago when Maximus died in the arena. His mother, Lucilla, who comes back, Connie Nielsen comes back in this film. Uh, she sent him off to protect him because he was heir to the throne. And he's been away all this time, turned into a man, and now he's a slave and he's a gladiator. And he's looking to get Pedro Pascal because Pedro Pascal is the head of the Roman army, but reluctantly. That's another whole story. But the acting here, he's married to a woman in the beginning of this and they have their love, whatever, and I feel not a single thing for either one of them. She dies early on, again, spoiler alert, can't, didn't feel a single thing for her. Peter Mensa, great actor, an actor I love, this guy from Spartacus, he was the messenger in, um, in 300 and you remember him from great things, mostly Spartacus where I remember him from. And he's in the movie and I'm thinking when I first heard that he was cast, I'm thinking, oh, this is great, I love that guy. He got killed within like the opening scene of the movie, five minutes of the movie. Terrible. Right there, I was like, you know what? This is pointless. I don't feel anything for this guy and his woman and the fact that she died and Peter Mensa died. I could care less where this movie goes. I felt nothing. In contrast, which is impossible to do. You can't really not watch this and compare to the original Gladiator because it's not an entirely separate story. It's like it is piggybacking off of and it is a very faint 
very poorly executed echo of the first one. They tried to re redo things that are similar in the original Gladiator. And it just doesn't work. This is an echo that will not live on in eternity at all. I was not entertained in the least. There's no feeling for this guy. There's none. I don't know if it's Paul Mescal, the actor. It's a combination of his performance and a combination of not having anything really to work with that doesn't work here. You do not feel for him. You don't feel for the relationship. The opening of Gladiator, the first five minutes, you immediately got a feel for Russell Crowe's character, for Maximus. You felt that guy. You, he had a gravitas about him. The way he talked to his men, the way he walked around, the way he commanded, the respect that he had, the love that he had for his troops. You can feel it in five minutes. And then from a visual standpoint, that first opening scene in Germania is just amazing. You can smell the dirt. You can smell the air, those huge trees. You can smell the fire when those catapults release. You can smell everything, the, the uniforms. It just had a tangible sense to it, the way it was shot. This, unfortunately, I feel Ridley went to CGI, I feel. There's an opening battle scene in the water, and it just feels to me like that just looks like generic CGI contemporary filmmaking to me. That's just my personal opinion. I don't know if it was all practical. I, I don't think so, especially in, in this day and age. But again, no Hans Zimmer doing the music. They used, obviously, pieces of the music. They had to. And Lisa Gerard's voice and some of the, the more memorable pieces from the original Gladiator score are here. But overall, this film falls flat because every character, including the two emperors who are supposed to be these evil, what, I mean, communists within, Joaquin Phoenix is communist. Again, his first appearance in this film is in the back of a, of a, of a, um, transport with his sister going to the battle to see his father after the battle's already been fought. But there's something about his, his diabolical face and the way he delivers his lines. And then when he first comes out and there's that slow-mo shot on his face and the way he looks when he asks for his horse, you can just feel this guy. And these two emperors, the two brothers... It's almost like caricatures. This is silly. They were silly. There's nothing to make you fear them or think, oh my God, these guys are really bad. Then Denzel Washington. Let's get into Denzel Washington's character, Denzel Washington's performance. I've said it before. I sometimes get in trouble for saying it. Denzel Washington is pretty much Denzel Washington in every movie you put him in. He's Denzel Washington. This time he's Denzel Washington in, in Roman garb, right? Like that's, that's who he is. He plays the head of... Uh, a house that owns gladiators and he's a pretty powerful guy in that arena and that's what he does and is it a terrible performance no is it anything memorable not in the least his character may be probably the most interesting character out of the whole because you can't like you can't quite figure him out just quite like is he proximo does he have proximo's heart underneath the business kind of guy the shrewd businessman is he really someone else i'm not going to get into it but He's probably the most interesting character. Everyone else in this movie, totally, I could care less about. Totally. And that's what makes this a bad film. That and the fact that they tried to essentially piggyback off of the original Gladiator with some of the themes and some of the ideas that this guy, he's Maximus' son, so he's strong. You know, which made no sense. This guy, all of a sudden, his first gladiatorial, you know, he's leading the troops. He's like the leader of the gladiators. How did that happen? We didn't get any sense of who you are. We didn't establish you as a strong guy except for like one fight. So you can fight, which again, they did the same way they did in original Gladiator. He has to stand there, prove himself. Denzel Washington has someone fight him, his doctor, fight him, and he refuses to fight. And then he has to fight and he proves himself. And all the other gladiators like, oh, he can actually fight. But that doesn't, that, that doesn't establish you as a leader. It doesn't establish you as anything worthy to be respected. This guy was flat, totally flat. So my perspective, no real bad guy or real threat here other than what was put on paper, right? So it wasn't really established. You don't really feel it. Rome is just whatever it is. And this guy's story and being, you know, the son of Maximus and he's supposed to embody the same thing as his father. It was all just, as far as I was concerned, it was empty, hollow, terrible. I was not entertained. Do not go to a theater and see this. Um, let me know in the comments below if you've already seen it and what you think about it. And if I'm just totally crazy or if you agree with what i'm saying let me know in the comments i really want i'm trying to think if there's anything else to even say about this film i just felt that i did not identify i didn't feel anything for any of these characters really quick before we go maximus's love for his wife and his child and being home was established early on just through subtle looks and flashbacks and the flashbacks weren't done 
where you see Maximus with his wife. You never see Maximus making love or Maximus holding her or in, you know, tending the garden or anything like that with his son. Nothing. You see the son and you see the face of the wife and you can feel and you can feel the love that he has, the way he talks to the little statues when he when he's praying, when he's talking to them. Um Everything, his moment of wanting to go home, that's what the whole movie was about. It, was about. it wasn't a revenge film. It was about a guy who wanted to get home to his wife and kid. And you feel that through the whole movie. You want him to get home to the very last thing of the movie where he dies. And, and Lucille says, go to them. And he floats off. This movie, this guy's married. He's got a wife. You don't give a damn. There is not a single thought about this woman. And funny, strangely enough, even when he's talking through the rest of the film, when he when he when he's a slave and he's a gladiator, you never sense any purpose of this guy. Like, what is his purpose? What does he want? What's he doing? Anyway, I'm done. That guy talks movies. Gladiator two, total waste of time, and very disappointed that they even made this film. I will not be adding this to my collection. This is the. Third film I've seen in the last, I guess, month, month and a half, that's a follow-up to a film that had no business being made and followed up. It was Joker 2, Folia Du, which was terrible. Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, this follow-up to Beetlejuice, another classic. And then this, not doing so well. I got to see some original material. <laughs> anyway, that guy talks movies. Thank you for watching. If you're a subscriber and you've stuck with me, even through all my absences, I truly appreciate you. And uh, much love to y'all. And if you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button. I talk about films and stuff here and there. And I'm trying to get back on schedule. So I appreciate you. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button on the way out. And I'll see you on the next That Guy Talks Movies. Peace.